Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start part nine of Flex Press with Adobe Flex. Now, last time, let me remind you what we've done. We created a WP Post program, brand new application in Flex Press or Flex My Thumbnail .mxml, and we've added a new column to our database, and that is thumb name. So let's run that and take a look at that. And at the very end here, you have thumb name, and we'll we opened that up last time so you could see it. But now what we want to do is actually bring that into our application, Flex My Thumbnail. If I click on that and I run that. there's nothing there nothing's happening so we need to actually go and copy the MXML from the previous project and paste it there so let's go back to the previous project so we need to grab the MXML from one of the previous projects that we were working on the one which did not have the thumb underscore name in its database so let's run this and make sure this is the right project And we can see, yes, indeed, here's, here is our list box with our name and our date all together. And we want to put an icon in that list box. going to show you how to do that right now. But first thing we need to do is just copy and paste this code right here into our new thumbnail project. So let's copy this. Let's go back up to the new projects that we've created with the Flex My Thumbnail, which is referencing the SQL database, the MySQL database, which has the thumb underscore name column. So let's open up the MXML. And now let's just paste all that in there. And if we run this project, let's run it. We can see that, yes, indeed, we do have the same thing as we had before. However, we have a big, big problem here. And let me show it to you in the bottom of the code. This HTTP service command is referring to the old URL, the myflexpressproj-debug, which has a wppost.php method, which is calling the old MySQL database, which does not have the thumb underscore name column in it. Now, it actually is calling the new one, which we've inserted it into, but it doesn't have the thumb underscore name PHP files or SWF files to operate with it. So we want to put that new address in there. Let's show you how you find that. Let's go to our W underscore post. We're going to run this program. This does have the correct PHP file in it that we need, so we're going to refer to that PHP file right now. We'll just type in PHP H with our question mark and method equals find all. And here's our new XML, and at the bottom of that, you can see the thumb underscore name XML node is in there. So now let's copy this address, and this is the correct address you want to use, because this is generated using our new project, which refers to the modified MySQL database. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Flex My Thumbnail MXML, going to highlight the old HTTP address and put in the new one. And now when we run this, we are referring to the new database, which will allow us to access that new thumb underscore name node. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And the way to access that is we're going to use an item renderer. So let's go back to our design view. And we're going to replace this list box with an item renderer. So we're back in our source code, and we actually highlighted the list box by clicking on it in the design view. And we're just going to right click on this, and we're going to comment it out by choosing source toggle block comment. And we're going to create a new list box. And we're going to put our item renderer inside of that list box. So put list and use that code hinting. And I love code hinting because it saves me the pain of typing in uh, something wrong and trying to go back and do some spell checking. Let's give it an ID name and we'll just call it my new list. And now we need to put in the data provider. And if you recall, that data provider is our array collection, which is my WP post, which I'm just going to copy that from above. And we'll bring it down and we'll paste it right in. And you have to put this data provider in curly brackets because it is a bindable expression. Let's do that right now. 
cool. And we can go ahead and close this. And we'll put a, a greater than sign. And we've got our closing down there. And let's go back to design view and move this around a little bit. Because you see what we've done. We've actually put it up here in the corner. So we're just going to grab it and move it where it needs to go. Over here, we're going to stretch it out a little bit. Definitely a lot of cosmetics needs to be done to this application, which we'll do in the future. Right now, we're just getting everything set so we can see the thumbnail images. Okay, cool, pretty cool. So the next thing we need to do is put the item renderer inside of here. So we'll go MX. Put in our less than sign. And MX. And get some code hinting going. And we put in an item renderer so we can see it's down at the bottom. So we'll have to do a little bit of typing. There's our item renderer. And let's close that tag. And then we're going to put in a component. So put in your less than sign. And there's our MXX, MX component. And we're only going to declare this component once. Cool. And inside that, we're going to put a H box. And let's close that tag. And in that, we're going to put an image and text component. And we're going to come back and actually fill some stuff in in these components. But let's go ahead and get the ba basic elements in. There's my image. Let's close that. Get some completion here. And right under it, we're going to put the text element. There's my text element. Let's close that tag with the greater than sign. And so what I have is I have my list box, and inside that an item renderer, and inside that a component, and inside that an H box, and the H box stacks the image and the text components horizontally. And now let's talk about the HBox. Basically, what HBoxes like to do is spawn scroll bars. And so we're going to actually uh, turn off the scroll bars. So we'll start with the vertical. Scroll policy. And we'll turn that off. And we'll turn off the horizontal scroll policy. So if you've had problems with uh, these... Uh, scroll bars being spawned automatically and getting in your way. You can just turn them off this way. Let's go to the front of this and we're actually going to now add a width and a height. So we'll start with a width. Get some code hitting here. And our width, let's just call it, make it 150 pixels. And this just is basically trial and error here. And our height, well since our thumbnail is going to be 50 pixels, we'll put in 50 here. Now that's the next thing we need to do is actually get those thumbnail images uh, let's go back to um, our component view here. And in our project, we need to create a thumbnail folder. So I'm actually right click in the source, hit new, and folder. And I'm going to create a folder to put our thumbnails in. And I'll call it thumb images. Finish. And previously, I'd created some thumbnail images. There's not much uh, meaning to these images. They're just randomly picked from another project, but they give us an example of how to do this. Now, as you create your blog, of course, you'll have to have good snags uh, that mean something. And a program, Snagit, for example, is what I often use to uh, grab thumbnail images with. Let's go ahead and paste that in our new folder up here. And I have 10 images in this folder, which I'm going to use to play around with. That's great. And let's go back. And now we have a double click and open the code back up. Now we can refer back to those images in our code. 